Coming up this morning on Daybreak, team coverage following a long night of severe weather in the Ozarks, including Hannah Zettel, who was in Ozark, where a neighborhood is hit hard by storms. And we'll also need to take a look at the damage from storms in Wheaton in Barry County, where there's damage to multiple structures. Plus, those storms also caused heavy damage down in Arkansas, uprooting trees and more. We'll have a look at that and plenty more coming up for you this morning on Daybreak. Well, good morning and thanks for joining us. It's Wednesday, May 1st. I'm Lauren Barnes And I'm Joe Morano. It was a long night for maybe you guys at home that were trying to take cover and seek shelter. Our weather team has been at work since 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. So we want to check in this morning with Elisa Rappa, who's still here. She's bringing us the forecast first this morning. Still here, guys. Um, we have aerial flood warnings in effect this morning. This is the most immediate threat right now. No severe weather, but residual flooding from all of that heavy rain yesterday. Uh, we don't have any severe weather this morning, but some plain old rain is shifting to the south and east, so things still a little bit wet. It's 59 in Springfield and 59 at Lake of the Ozarks. Could have a little bit of a lull in the storms by dismissal. Temperature at 75 degrees, but if we bubble up that atmosphere again, we could be dealing with at least another one or two strong to severe storms that we have to monitor details on that in 10 minutes. And as we mentioned, we have team coverage of damage and what will become recovery efforts as the sun rises today after those storms rolled through yesterday. One area specifically in Ozark saw heavy damage to homes and cars. And that's where we find Hannah Zettel this morning in Ozark and surveying the damage. Hannah, what neighborhood are you in right now? Good morning, Lauren and Joe. I'm in wa the Waterford neighborhood of Ozark, where this entire neighborhood has suffered severe damage from the storms last night. One neighbor told me that that happened at about 9 p.m. when the warning came, and he did hunker down with his family. His children were very shaken up. His pets were very shaken up. But waking up this morning, he's just happy to be alive and happy to have everybody um, kind of doing well. He did uh, go door to door as soon as things were safe to check on neighbors. He did help one neighbor out of her home and to get to the hospital. Uh, he went to another elderly couple that he lives by and they did have a storm shelter in their basement that they were able to take cover in, but the houses are just totally ripped apart. There are roofs gone, there's insulation everywhere, there's wood everywhere. There, it's just a total loss to this neighborhood and houses that don't have exterior damage do have interior damage. The man we spoke with doesn't have much on the outside, but the inside, he said, is just totally flooding and he'll likely lose everything that he owns. But he is counting his blessings and his children's health, him and his family's health. His neighbors are okay. Police were patrolling the area earlier this morning. Now as the sun comes up, neighbors are waking up and going door to door and seeing what they can do to help. School is out today in Ozark, so families can take that time to kind of do a head count, see what they can save. But we'll be back in a little bit in Ozarks. Hannah Zettel, Ozarks first. All right, Hannah, thank you. That scene there behind you is really a testament to that this storm system was unlike anything we've seen here in recent years. Certainly, and our storm team here was on the air seven and a half hours straight last night, keeping the area up to date on constant tornado warnings and flash flood alerts. Elisa Rafa was part of that coverage all along. She's back here this morning in the weather lab to continue our coverage this morning. Yeah, that, those images of the damage behind uh, Hannah, very chilling this morning. Um, and I wanted to just share some more uh, pictures that we've got with you into the weather lab. We've got lots of them last night. This one is of a wall cloud that was spotted near Branson. There were also some pretty nasty storms that came through uh, Taney and Stone Counties down there in uh, Branson, that wall cloud uh, spotted there. This tree snapped uh, from that wind damage also in the Branson area. And again, of course, the focus uh, while it's happening is torn tornadoes, but we had significant flash flooding. These are pictures out of Ava. You could see that water just came down so quickly. The streets started to look like rivers in parts of Ava. Teresa Tost sent us this picture. So here's the map of storm reports. It will get uh, added to as we head through the day and as the weather service does these storm reports. Multiple streets closed up in Stockton because of that flash flooding. This is the tornado that Hannah Zettel, uh, that site that she was just at, uh, there in uh, Fremont Hills near Ozark with those roofs torn off. Uh, Miller could have had more than one tornado touchdown. We were tracking that area very closely yesterday. We in also another area with some extensive damage um, and that could have also dropped multiple tornadoes on that line. And then um, 
Bergman in uh, Boone County, northern Arkansas, had some significant damage. We got video of that big tornado, and that one also took a couple of uh, spin-ups up to the north. So I wanted to look at what how, what have been the major outbreaks in the Ozarks because this we haven't seen in at least uh, the, within the last decade. 33 tornadoes back in January of 2008, 18 tornadoes in an outbreak in May 2009, May 2003 had 15 tornadoes and 12 tornadoes back in March of 2006. Again, the good part about this so far is that we have not had any injury or fatality uh, reports and the Weather Service will do more on that survey damage today uh, to get a final number on that tornado count for us. Joe Lauren. Elisa, thank you. Also happening now, Springfield City Utilities posted these photos of downed power lines on Highway 60 just east of town. A total of 17 power poles broke and City Utilities officials on Facebook calling it what it is, a mess. Crews spent the night trying to clean everything up, but believe it will take a good part of today to get everything back up and running. This, as many people across the Ozarks are still without power. Last night, more than 7,000 homes were without power just in our viewing area. Utility crews have worked around the clock and have brought that number down to around 4,000 right now. And the Logan Rogersville Fire Protection District says the storm caused damage throughout its district. Fire crews have several buildings with varying levels of damage as you can see on some of these pictures posted that most of the damage occurred in the area near US Highway 60 and Harmony. The fire district also warned residents of several downed power lines and roadways covered by debris or water. Police have set up a command center near the Meeks building that's on Highway 60 and this storm brought with it rounds of a heavy rain that will lead to low water crossings becoming flooded. The MoDOT travelers map is a good tool to utilize in these instances. Several areas experiencing issues with flooding already as several road closures due to flooding are happening in Douglas County and counties to the east of Springfield. Also noteworthy route F eastbound at Bull Creek in Taney County is also closed. So we've seen also reports that the Branson campground by the landing is being evacuated because of flood threats. And we have even more video that we got of the tornado that was spotted in Wheaton. Storm chasers Jason Bloom and Dave Toner shared this video with us as they see some harrowing images here. The city of Wheaton suffered some of the worst damage from the storm system that tore through the Ozarks. But as of now, we can report, like Elisa said, no injuries we know of, just some near misses and quite a bit of property damage to show you. We spoke to a homeowner named Debbie Brown. She was home alone when the tornado came through and tried to run her, her to her neighbor's cellar, but once she got there, it was locked. She looked up into the sky and saw a tornado a few hundred yards away, making a quick decision. So I just thought, oh my God, it's my time. I got to get the bathtub. So I grabbed a couple blankets, got in there, got my head covered. My husband called and was crying and bawling and yelling because he was stuck over here and couldn't get to me. I called my daughter and told her that I loved her and then everything went silent and I thought, oh my God, it's it's coming. And then it was just like a crushing noise. And I guess that's when it hit or when this big tree came up. Undoubtedly thankful that she's here to tell that story today. Her neighbors saw the worst of the damage, including Wheaton's fire chief, whose roof ripped off his home. But about five minutes southwest of there, at the Southwest Auction, multiple buildings were a total loss, including a two-story home that collapsed in on itself. No one was home at that time, thankfully. We spoke with the owner of the auction barn, Bob Hughes, who described the phone calls with his family and employees before the tornado hit and as he was about 10 minutes away. So I called my employees and my daughter and son both work here as well as about 10 other people and uh, told them to pack up, go home about, uh, I don't know, it was 3, 3.30. And they said the sun was shining, it looked beautiful here, wasn't any reason for alarm. I called back five minutes later and I said that tornado is supposed to be there in 10 minutes to get everybody out of there and go home. My daughter got five miles from here, my uh, office secretary's got five miles from here, all the employees got about five miles from here and then the tornado hit.
Now, people at the Wheaton Fire Department will also spend the night and into today helping residents get things out of their homes. Crews will also be there to survey the damage. And because of the amount of damage and the effort it'll take to fully assess all of that, both Wheaton and Ozark school districts have canceled classes today. So again, we want to reiterate and give you a reminder this morning. Our weather team was on the air for seven and a half straight hours yesterday, trying to keep you safe at home and take alert. We understand that you missed some CBS programming last night as well. CBS.com will stream those shows you may have missed for free up to five days where you can watch online. And thank you to those who were patient with us. Tornadoes don't impact everyone at the same time. So thank you for everybody um, who, again, was patient with us as we did our job to save lives and property. Uh, we're tracking just some showers this morning. No severe weather. We're dealing with, though, residual flash flooding and possibly another severe threat today. Details on all of that right after the break. From Color 10 Ozarks First, Lauren Barnes. Joe Morano and weather with meteorologist Alisa Rafa. This is Color 10 News Daybreak. weather with meteorologist Elisa Rafa. Good morning and thanks for joining us. We're starting out with aerial flood warnings for all of our Missouri counties until 11 o'clock this evening. Yesterday's uh, strong and severe storms dropped lots of heavy rain. They were soaked to begin with and then they stayed over the same spots through much of the afternoon. So look at the re recorded rain. This is radar estimated 24 hour rainfall. Uh, just incredible. Uh, some of these totals, we're looking at widespread of three to four inches of rain. Some of these totals in the purple around Ava radar is estimating that they exceeded five inches, and it's certainly possible. We're seeing some of those ground reports there, even back towards Joplin, some of the same. So uh, incredible rainfall rates. It looks like Springfield uh, literally just missed it as the uh, stronger storms went pretty much just around Springfield last night. But uh, again, lots 
of, of, of water, lots of rainwater just sitting there. There have been multiple water rescues between yesterday afternoon, evening, and even just as soon as three hours ago, still some water rescues. So please never drive through a flooded roadway. Don't underestimate the power of water. Starting out with clouds in Springfield, it's 59 degrees. Unsuddenly winds at 11 miles per hour. We've got whatever's left from last night is just some regular old rain. Not looking at any severe weather with this. It's some just some light to moderate showers from Eminence and West Plains and Mumboard back down into north central and northwest Arkansas. Uh, we're looking at just some moderate rain again, not even too much in the way of lightning out of this, just mainly looking at some uh, wet roads. The front that brought us all the severe weather yesterday has shimmies itself a little bit to the south and east, and then we've got to see if it will shimmy its way back up to the north and west and, and come back into the Ozarks, because if it does that, then it could start to bubble that fuel that it needs for the strong and severe storms, just like it did yesterday. So if it does that, we're going to carry another severe threat today. We've got that marginal risk for everyone in the Ozarks in the green. That means one or two of these storms could be strong to severe. And if we bubble up enough of this energy, we're mainly looking at the threat for a quarter size to golf ball size hail, wind 60 to 70 miles per hour. That widespread flooding threat will stay whether it rains or not because it's residual at this point. If we can, if we can juice up and enough, like so if we juice up to point A, we could get isolated wind or hail. If we juice up to point B, we could be adding an isolated tornado threat with that. You can see that for now, that tornado threat is backed off of our area, something to monitor today. Uh, for now, mainly a wind and hail threat, but we've got to monitor that small chance that we could bring back that tornado threat. Again, I'm keeping that flooding threat elevated because even if it doesn't rain, we'll keep that residual flooding. I think we'll have a lull in the afternoon with things not too bad, and then uh, some of those uh, isolated strong and severe storms possible by the evening and overnight. So here's my low on uh, that future cast. You can see we exit with those showers to the south and east, but we're looking at some clouds in the afternoon with temperatures in the 70s. That could help pop that fuel again. We're looking at some uh, showers and storms by the evening and overnight, increasing in coverage, and uh, we might be dealing with another severe, severe threat there. Uh, by tomorrow, the front continues to try to push to the south and east and uh, we could have another severe threat with that as well. Could drop another one to two inches of rain, which on top of four to five to six inches is not good. So flash flood watches continue until 7 a.m. Thursday for that flood threat continuing. Uh, again, that severe risk, uh, that's today. This is tomorrow. The front slides south and east, so, so does the severe threat. We might still have to deal with one or two strong storms as it exits. Chance of showers on Friday, but we should be clear from the severe weather. 75 today, new storms could be developing later on by the evening. Again, we could carry a severe threat, so you want to stay tuned to Jamie's forecast tonight. He'll be able to fine tune that better. 62 degrees there, 71 by tomorrow. A couple more showers and storms possible. We'll keep that rain chance on Friday. Looks like the weekend will be dry. Finally, unsettled again though by early next week. And a shout out to our viewers celebrating birthdays and anniversaries today. Eloise Warner, Vincent Fox, Lester Shelton, happy birthday to you all. We have some big anniversaries on the board too. Look at that. We do. Marvin and Kimberly, 56 years. Go celebrate. Seriously. And Lester got married on his birthday. That's a good Look point. At this. How about that? Oh, what All a right. big day for you guys. Happy 64. Hope you have a good one. Don't forget, if you want an announcement on Daybreak, send us an email to birthdays at color10.com. All right. We didn't have time for sports last night, so Dan Lucy is going to bring us the latest coming up next.
The first place St. Louis Cardinals have had a red hot start to this season. St. Louis is in our nation's capital. Last night they played the Nationals. The Cards went into the contest with 18 victories. That's the most wins by April 30th in the 128 year history of the franchise. Washington jumps up on Adam Wainwright in the third. Adam Eaton takes him deep to right. This one goes into the bullpen. A solo shot to make it 1 0 Nationals. Next batter is Victor Robles, and he would take this one deep to left center. This one would go into the Cardinals bullpen back to back Jackson. It was 2 0 Nationals. St. Louis would get those back in the fourth inning, though. Bases loaded, two outs. Colton Long lays down the bunt. It's good, and Paul DeYoung comes in to score to make it a 2 1 game. Bases still loaded for Harrison Bader, and he would bloop this single over second base. It drops into short center. Jose Martinez and Yadier Molina both come in to score to make it a 3-2 Cardinal lead. And the Cardinals hold on to win 3-2. That's 19 victories so far this season. St. Louis Blue is one of the best teams in the NHL playoffs. And the reason is because they're one of the best road dreams in the league. Last night, they proved that again. They own a two-to-one game lead in their best-of-seven series with Dallas. On Monday night in Texas, both teams scored two goals in a frantic five-minute span in the third period. It was 3-3 with a minute and a half left in the game when St. Louis native Patrick Maroon would shoot and score. The Blues go on to win 4-3. St. Louis has won its last four playoff road games, and game four is tonight in Dallas. I think our team does a really good job of responding now. Uh, you know, we, we have this belief system in here that's really weird, but we just feel like we always can find ways to win hockey games, and we, we do that. And, you know, we've got to give credit to the Stars for bouncing back and uh, pushing back. And But, you know, we got the edge, I feel like, by just pushing back harder. We are a confident group. And, um, you know, just because a goal goes in, no matter if it's shorthand or five on five, we stay with it and keep battling. It appears that Jamal Charles will retire from the NFL and a Kansas City radio station is reporting that the Chiefs will sign him to a ceremonial one-day contract so he can retire as a Chief. Kansas City drafted Charles as the 73rd player taken in the 2008 NFL draft. The Texas Longhorn was a four-time Pro Bowl player, a two-time AP All-Pro pick. He will retire as the Chiefs' all-time leading rusher with 7,260 yards in 103 games. Kansas City released him in 2017. He played for the Broncos and Jaguars after that. Royals and Missouri State were rained out last night. Springfield Cardinals were off. I'm Dan Lucy with your morning sports. All right, thank you, Dan Lucy, for the update. Nice to get a little break from all that happened, but we do need to address what has gone on over, what, the past 12, 15, 16 hours or so. And, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to take this moment to, because what's going on in my brain right now is Jamie is such a brilliant meteorologist. Right. He um, had been warning us for days. Even he and I chatted yesterday in the weather lab, and he was like, I, this is going to be an active day. Right. The, everybody, get ready, it's going to be an active day. And mm -hmm. he had said that multiple times on air. And even as the warnings, even before the warnings were coming out, he was pointing out, that's going to be a warning, that's going to be. <laughs> and then here we go, five, ten minutes later, I'm like, of course, Jamie got it. This isn't sucking up to the boss. No. This is just true. No. Right? Yeah. All right. So I'm good sorry. to have him helping right. all of us out and then also you to have be there to help him. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. So yeah, we worked some long hours yesterday. No severe weather this morning. Mm -hmm. What we're dealing with this morning is residual flooding because okay. we had lots of heavy rain yesterday. Aerial flood warning is in effect for all of our Missouri counties because we had widespread four to five to in, in some spots six inches of rainfall and multiple water rescues have taken place since yesterday. Uh, multiple. Uh, one even just at three o'clock in the morning. So please uh, never drive through a flooded roadway. Uh, cloudy skies out in Springfield. We've got some showers to the south and to the east but none severe. 59 in West Plains right now 57 in Branson and 60 in Battenville. I think we could have a little bit of a lull by dismissal. Maybe some clouds, the temperatures in the 70s, but that could help us refuel the atmosphere where we could have another severe threat. We've got that marginal risk. It means one or two storms could be strong to severe, mainly for hail to quarter or, or golf ball size at winds to 60 miles per hour or greater. But if we build more juice, maybe we could be flirting with another isolated tornado threat. For now, we're pretty much taken out of that tornado threat for today. 
but it's something to continue to monitor, uh, mainly looking at that wind and hail threat. But again, we might have to put that tornado threat back in. Uh, flooding, I'm leaving it elevated all day because it, or it even could be significant at this point, really, guys, because we've got that residual flooding. Uh, there's my little low, and then we'll have a couple of these storms possible by the evening and overnight. You can see that low there on Futurecast, temperatures in the 70s, a couple of showers and storms possible by the evening and overnight. And then again, tomorrow, we tack on more rain. Rain, so more flash flooding is likely. And your market launch for today. Yesterday, the Nikkei fell 48 points. The Dow rose 38. Dow futures right now are up 78 points. Yesterday, the Nasdaq lost 66. Those futures up 53. All right, and coming up next, we need to check in with what's happening in North Carolina. Some breaking news from last night. Two people are dead and several others injured after a college campus shooting. Welcome back this morning as we take a quick break from storm damage from yesterday to update you on a North Carolina college campus shooting that happened yesterday. Two people are dead and four others are injured after someone opened fire on the campus of the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. The suspect is in custody. We check in with Laura Podesta who has some details for today. A student armed with a pistol opened fire at a North Carolina University yesterday afternoon. This is the worst day in the history of UNC Charlotte. We've lost two members of our community. We have four injured students. As students ran away from the gunfire at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte, <laughs> campus police officers ran into the building and arrested the suspect. Our officers' actions definitely save lives. There's no doubt about that. Those who were inside did what they could to stay safe. One of the students there wrapped a belt around the door so that no one could get in. They barricaded it and stuck something um, in it so it wouldn't slide open. As the shooting unfolded, the school sent out increasingly urgent alerts. The campus was on lockdown and there was an active shooter and then literally like 30 seconds later they said that shots were actually fired and then like 
10 seconds later they said that people were shot and then like another couple minutes they said that people were actually killed. Police identified 22 year old Tristan Andrew Terrell as the suspect. They searched his home last night. We will take a look, a hard look at this entire situation to find out what happened and how it happened and things that can be prevented. Sources tell CBS affiliate WBTV in Charlotte, Terrell had withdrawn from all but one class. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Coming up next on Daybreak, we resume our team storm coverage from overnight. And Elisa will tell you you're not completely in the clear yet. She has details on another severe risk today. weather with meteorologist Elisa Rafa. Good morning. Uh, no severe weather this morning, but we are dealing with residual flooding. Aerial flood warnings are in effect until 11 o'clock this evening as we got four to five to in some places six inches of rain. Water rescues have been happening, so please never drive through the flooded roadways. We've got clouds in Springfield, a couple of showers to the south and to the east, not even a lot of lightning in there, just some uh, moderate showers from Mountain Home and Melbourne and then up towards West Plains and then back into Bentonville and Fayetteville as well. Temperatures of 60 in Bentonville, 57 in Branson, and 59 in Springfield. We're looking at uh, maybe a little bit of a lull this afternoon, 75 degrees with some clouds. But if we recook that atmosphere, we could be looking at another severe threat. This is a marginal risk for severe weather. Um, maybe some wind and hail threats, plus the flash flooding threat continues. Details on all of this in 10 minutes. In continuing our team coverage now, we have Hannah Zettel, who is live on the scene in Ozark, where one neighborhood has just been torn to pieces from those storms. Yeah, Hannah, what have you noticed? We also, we've been hearing some alarms going off as you've been doing your, your live shots with us this morning. 
That's right, Lauren and Joe. I'm now as the sun's coming up and neighbors are kind of coming out of their homes, we can see a lot more. I'm looking at debris all over the ground. There's wood, there are shingles, there's lining from the houses. This house behind me, the roof is completely torn off and just hanging on by a thread, it seems. Um, there's just debris everywhere, belongings spilling out everywhere, trees down, fences down, cars damaged. I'm looking at a trampoline on a roof. The owner of that home doesn't even know where that trampoline came from, so that was lifted and placed on his roof. Um, like I mentioned, neighbors are starting to wake up and come out, and they're a little shaken up, understandably not quite ready to talk, but they have told me that they're just happy to be alive. They're happy to be healthy and safe. Um, the owner of this house was reportedly injured when she was found hiding, kind of taking shelter in a closet, but she was taken to the hospital and they believe that she should be okay. But like I said, this neighborhood here in Ozark is just devastated. Houses on the exterior have been completely ripped apart, but houses that don't have damage on the outside do have flooding and water damage on the inside that could take away from the whatever could be saved from the house. But in Ozark, Hannah Zettel, Ozark's first. All right, thank you very much, Hannah Zettel, this morning. We'll check back in with her one more time. More Daybreak coming up in just a few minutes, everyone. Stay with us. Now, forecast first on Color 10 News, Ozarks First. Good morning and thanks for joining us after a very long afternoon and night of a, a tornado outbreak essentially across the Ozarks. We're not dealing with that this morning, but what we are dealing with is residual flooding. An aerial flood warning goes until 11 o'clock this evening for all of our Missouri counties because these storms as they came in, not only did they pack a punch with a ton of rain, uh, but they stayed over the same areas over and over and over. So that's where we get um, that flood threat. I mean, look at some of these esti radar estimated rain totals. Lots of these oranges here, we're looking at widespread totals, three to four to five inches. And some of these purples, we're looking at totals closer to six inches. And the radar is not all that off. We are seeing some ground reports that say that back to around Ava and then over towards Joplin and up towards Lockwood. I mean, the rain that was coming down out of these storms was incredible. There have been multiple water rescues from yesterday and through the overnight, even just as soon as three o'clock in the morning, someone else was just rescued. So please don't drive through the flooded 
flooded roadways. You'd be surprised at how little water it takes to sweep your car away. Clouds in Springfield this morning. It's 59 degrees on south winds at 11 miles per hour. We've got whatever's left from yesterday to the south and east, and it's not severe. Uh, it's just some regular old rain, not even a lot of lightning. We've got some uh, light to moderate showers from Bentonville and Fayetteville through north central Arkansas and then into uh, that tip in north central Arkansas. Melbourne, Ash Flat, Salem, and then up towards Eminence and Van Buren in uh, Missouri as well. So that's pretty much all we've got left. And again, it's not severe right now. We've got the front that has shifted to the south and east. And what we are looking for is, is it going to pop back up to the north and west? And then if it does that, is it going to build all of this juice that we need to fuel more strong and severe storms? Well, for now, we've got that marginal risk for severe weather for the entire area in the green. That means one or two of these storms could be strong to severe. We're mainly for now looking at the threat of uh, isolated cases of uh, damaging winds to 60 or 70 miles per hour in large hail to quarter to golf ball size. That flooding is going to remain widespread whether it rains or not because we've got that residual flooding. If we build even more juice, we could be looking at another isolated tornado threat. Uh, a low end on the possibility scale, but something to monitor. So for now, we've been pretty much taken out of the overall tornado risk from the Storm Prediction Center today, but we still have the wind and hail risk. And again, we've got to monitor to see if we need to be put back in. Timing of this, again, I'm leaving the flooding threat elevated to probably significant through the day because uh, again even if it's not raining we still have that residual flooding going on with the rivers and the creeks uh, the uh, wind and hail threat again I think we'll have a lull in the afternoon and then we'll have uh, some showers and storms start to pop in more number and intensity probably by the evening and into the overnight and that's where we could get one or two strong to severe storms so here's where uh, my little lull is you can see temperatures uh, warm up into the 70s by this afternoon once those showers that we've got now clear to the south and east then we could pop another couple of showers and thunderstorms by this evening and into the overnight could be dealing with some of that by tomorrow morning and then by tomorrow afternoon we're looking at that line coming back down to the south and east as it finally tries to exit that could bring us another severe threat and with more rain we tack on another one to two inches of rain which is not good when we've got four to five to six inches down so flash flood watches continue through 7 a.m thursday uh, for that flood threat uh, the severe risk today again we had detailed that uh, tomorrow it nudges south and east as the front does. Friday, some showers could still linger, but it looks like we'll be free <laughs> of the severe threat. 75 degrees today. A couple of more storms could develop up later on. 62 overnight. Again, we'll keep the chance for storms and severe, possibly severe weather. Uh, 71 by tomorrow. Another round of some showers and thunderstorms. A chance of rain on Friday. The weekend looks dry. Up next, we go to Arkansas as our neighbors to the south were also hit with some severe weather last night. We'll take a look at tornado damage in Boone County as we continue to recap last night's storms. Stay with us, everyone.
Welcome back to Daybreak, everyone. 45 past the hour as we continue our team coverage of yesterday's storms. In Arkansas, a massive tornado caught on camera near the Bergman High School in Boone County. This is video from Julie Morrison Barnes. As you can see, just some very scary images coming from Arkansas. Color 10's Crystal Blair was actually in Boone County where she caught up with a man whose home was severely damaged by the storm you're seeing. Well, if you look right here behind me, you can see where some very large trees were just uprooted by this powerful storm. Yes, we did talk with the homeowner who had his home completely destroyed, and he says right now he's just grateful that no one was in that house when this storm hit. Several homes in Boone County just east of Bergman were damaged. Large trees were uprooted and power lines were down. Dustin Hefner's home was hit pretty hard. He says he would have been celebrating two years in the house tomorrow, but now he's just grateful that he and three other family members were not home when this storm came through. You know, the back end of the house is gone. 90% um, of the roof, I'd say, is pretty, pretty gone, um, and all but a few trees. So but it can all be replaced, so. Well, I did ask Hefner what he plans to do next. He says, of course, report this to the insurance agency to see what happens. But for right now, he just wants to get him, him and his family someplace where they can get some rest because more storms are coming this way. In Boone County, Crystal Blair, Ozarks First. And don't go anywhere. We will be right back to get one last look at all that happened yesterday and another look at what's to come later on today. We'll be right back. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. It's time for Daybreak in 10 on Color 10. We'll be on the air commercial free to wrap up the show for you. And let's get started with meteorologist Elisa Ratha. She's had a very busy 24 hours. Elisa, kick off Daybreak in 10 for us. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Uh, no severe weather this morning, but we've got aerial flood warnings for all of our Missouri counties until 11. Residual flooding from four, five, six inch rainfall totals. Water rescues have taken place. Please don't drive through the flooded roadways. We've got some showers lingering in Arkansas this morning, but no severe weather. Temperatures are in the upper 50s and lower 60s. I think we'll have a low by dismissal, 75 degrees with some clouds, but we could bubble up enough of juice to feel more severe weather. We've got that marginal risk, meaning one or two storms mainly with some large hail and damaging winds, but we might be able to pop another tornado threat, isolated tornado threat for now and not included with it, but we might have to see how things progress through the day if we need to add uh, that wind and hail threat. This would be mainly be in the evening and overnight. Joe Warren. 
All right, Elisa, thank you. We also have some team coverage of damage and recovery efforts from the storm that rolled through much of the area yesterday. One neighborhood in Ozark specifically saw very heavy damage to homes and cars. That's right. Hannah Zettel is out there this morning. She's looking at that. You can even hear in the background some smoke alarms and security alarms that have become unhinged that are going off in the background there. Hannah, can you give us a, a better feel of what you're seeing out there? Joe, you're right when you say that these alarms are loud. They've been going off all morning, understandably, ever since the storm hit last night around 9 p.m. The houses here in this neighborhood in Ozark are completely damaged. The one behind me, the roof is hanging on by what seems like a thread. There's debris everywhere across the street. There's wood, there are roof shingles, there's lining of the house, people's personal belongings that have scattered out onto the ground. Neighbors are waking up now, and now that the sun's up, they're getting a better, clearer view of what's left of their homes. Homes that aren't damaged on the outside do have damage on the inside from the flooding and the water and the power going out. The power was put back on this morning around 3 a.m., I'm told by neighbors, but it's going to be a long day of sifting through what's left and seeing what they can save and just seeing what can be done in the calm after the storm. In Ozark, Hannah Zettel, Ozark's first. All right, Hannah, we can see some of the neighbors there behind you just taking pictures of what they can't believe they're seeing. It's unlike anything we've seen in the Ozarks in several years. Yeah, and our storm team was actually on the air for seven and a half hours straight last night, giving us constant updates on all that was going on. Elisa Rafa, part of that wall-to-wall -wall coverage. She's been here since 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Elisa joins us now once again, though, in the Weather Lab to continue our team coverage. It's chilling to see uh, those the damage behind Hannah this morning and uh, wanted to share more pictures and reports with you this morning. This is a picture of a wall cloud that was spotted in Branson. There were some pretty nasty storms that came through Taney and Stone counties in the Branson area there uh, yesterday. Uh, trees were snapped from that wind damage down in Branson. And then, of course, when we're doing wall to wall coverage, the primary threat is tornado. But uh, Flash flooding, huge concern yesterday and still is this morning. Water are just piling up in Ava. The streets started to look like rivers down in Ava. So we've got the storm report map that will continue to get filled as we head through the day today. Streets are closed in parts of Stockton because of that flooded roadway. Uh, this is the tornado report where Hannah was just at near Ozark and Fremont Hills. Also, Miller was a prime spot from probably more than one tornado. We also had um, some pretty significant damage out of Wheaton and a couple of tornadoes around there and then one up in uh, Bergman uh, in, in north central Arkansas that also worked its way up. Now an outbreak that we haven't seen within the last couple of years. So I looked at some past outbreaks. We had 33 tornadoes back in January. That's odd in and of itself. In 2008, 18 tornadoes in May of 2009, May 2003, 15 tornadoes, 12 tornadoes uh, in March in 2006. Right now we have seven non-confirmed tornadoes and the Weather Service will work to give us a final confirmed number uh, through the next coming days with their surveys. Joe, Lauren. Elisa, we do have some video of a tornado that was spotted in Wheaton. Storm chasers Jason Bloom and Dave Toner shared this video of the storm with us. Yeah, the city of Wheaton suffered some of its worst damage from the storm system that tore through. As of now, we can say there are no injuries from there, but we still are waiting on reports. Just some property damage is what we know of so far. We spoke to a homeowner named Debbie Brown. Much of the damage was to houses all around hers, but she told the story of when that tornado came through. She was home alone at the time and tried to run to her neighbor's cellar, found out that it was locked. She looked up and saw a tornado a few hundred yards away and then had to make a quick decision. So I just thought, oh my God, it's my time. I got to get the bathtub. So I grabbed a couple blankets, got in there, got my head covered. My husband called and was crying and bawling and yelling because he was stuck over here and couldn't get to me. I called my daughter and told her that I loved her. And then everything went silent. And I thought, oh my God, it's, it's coming. And then it was just like a crushing noise. And I guess that's when it hit or when this big tree came up.
Now, her neighbors saw the worst of the damage, including Wheaton's fire chief, who had the roof ripped off of his own home. About five minutes from there at the Southwest Auction Building area, multiple buildings were total losses, including a two-story home that collapsed. Nobody was in the home at the time. We did speak with the owner, Bob Hughes, who described the phone calls with his family and employees before the tornado came through that area while he was just about 10 minutes away. So I called my employees and my daughter and son both work here as well as about 10 other people and uh, told them to pack up, go home about, uh, I don't know, it was 3, 3.30. And they said the sun was shining, it looked beautiful here, wasn't any reason for alarm. I called back five minutes later and I said that tornado is supposed to be there in 10 minutes to get everybody out of there and go home. My daughter got five miles from here. My uh, Office secretaries got five miles from here. All the employees got about five miles from here, and then the tornado hit. People at the fire department spent the night trying to help others get things out of their homes, and crews are heading back out that way this morning to survey the damage. Also happening now, many people are still without power across the Ozarks. Last night, more than 7,000 homes were without power in our viewing area. Those orange spots indicate some of the areas still without the most power. Utility crews, though, have worked around the clock and have brought that number down to 3,500 currently. And Looking at some other storm damage across the Ozarks, those storms also tore through Miller, Missouri yesterday. You can see sending a tree through this man's home, causing major damage to the roof and maybe even the entire second floor. Rick and Susan Taylor have been living in their home in Miller for more than 40 years, but during the storms yesterday, they witnessed a close call. As the Taylors were watching TV in their den, they say they saw a flash of lightning and heard a loud boom, which wound up being the tree. And both Rick and Susan escaped the incident without any serious injuries, but say the storm is unlike anything they've ever seen. And finally, we want to take one last look at some video that we got from Tree Town Vacation Resorts in Walnut Shade, Missouri. As you take a look here, the company posted this video of flash flooding of the North Emory Creek. Luckily, the tree houses were built high enough so they weren't affected by the flood water. As you can see, the water moving very fast, though, overflowing out of its bank right there. Some scary images there. Just a lot that's gone on in Springfield and throughout the Ozarks. Mm -hmm. And today, whenever we started the show, we said no fatalities, no injuries to report. Hannah, being live on the scene there, knows of one injury, and right. that's just going to be the start of now that the sun's up, crews can get out there and survey damage of more detailed reports we'll be able to get today. The Weather Service will absolutely be, um, will be doing that. They might have to monitor where they're going depending on if we get severe weather today. If we just look at that seven day real quick, we'll have a couple of showers and storms possible, especially later on this evening and overnight. All right, everyone, thanks for watching and thanks for starting your day with us on Daybreak. More updates on OzarksFirst.com.